Hello, I'm Kathy Davidson. I'd like you to join me and the ministers of music from Water of Life Church here in Plano, Texas, as we minister to you the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, which is the power of God. The year was 1865, and the Monument Street Methodist Church was undergoing repairs. The cabinet organ was placed in the care of the choir director and organ player, a Mr. John T. Grape. He was delighted to have the organ in his home because he could then practice it at will. He was determined to take advantage because to work, he was working on a theme, a melody that he had, as he, as he described it, been running in his mind for some time. He made it a matter of prayer and study. He then presented his piece, which he titled, All to Christ I Owe, to the choir and to his friends. And as he put it, it was pronounced by them very poor. But his dear wife persistently declared that it was a good piece of music and that it would live. Time proved her right. Meanwhile, about the same time and in the same church, it just so happened that one Sunday morning, a Mrs. Alvina Hall was listening to the pastor, the Reverend George Shrek, preach his message on the cross. And she began to consider the sacrifice that Jesus had made for her. There, sitting in her pew, while in thought, these wonderful words flooded into her heart and formed into a beautiful poem. She didn't want to lose them, so she wrote them out while seated there in that pew, in the only place that she had to write, on the inside front flap of her hymnal. When the service was over, she felt guilty for writing during the sermon, so she went to the pastor and told him her story. He read the words and marveled. They both wondered how that God, these God-given words could be used for his glory. Well, not long after that, the Mr. Reverend Shrek called on Mr. Grape and asked him if he had anything new to play for the congregation. Mr. Grape played for him his new piece, All to Christ I Owe. On hearing the music, the Reverend expressed his pleasure with it and then shared with him that a Mrs. Alvino Hall had written some words that just might suit that music. Well, they did. Perfectly perfectly matched. The music and the words were put together and it was soon sung in several churches in Baltimore. All the suggest, uh, at the suggestion of Mr. Grape's friends, now who thought the music was good, he sent a copy to Professor Theodore Perkins and the hymn was published. It hasn't stopped since. I want to read you the chorus, the words written by Elvina. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I have the song here, performed here by Paul Peters, ministered by him, and the accompaniment is by the Brown family. Blood 
the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save my lips shall still be Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Let the power of my Lord be great. Father, let the power of my Lord be great. Father, let the power of my Lord that raised Jesus from the dead be great. Father, open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, about seven years ago, I was living in a small town, a town called Frisco, and I had two women that helped me clean my house. They were a mother and daughter. And it just so happened that the daughter had just become a grandmother. She had, uh, her, her daughter had just given birth to a baby prematurely. And when they were at my house helping me, we were working all together, they were visibly upset. And I asked them, I said, what's the problem? They said that the newborn baby, the premature baby, uh, the doctor had told him that morning that he did not think that the baby was going to survive. They said they could not get the child to breathe regularly. So when we were standing there, I can tell you exactly where we were standing. We were standing in my bathroom. And the power of God came up in my heart at that moment. And I said, Father, in Jesus' name, have mercy on this baby. Have mercy on this baby and her mother and her grandmother. Have mercy. We finished the work. They left. I didn't see them for another two weeks. They came back two weeks later, and I asked them. I said, how's the baby? They said, oh, she's breathing wonderfully. They said, she's gaining weight. She's getting ready to come home. I said, when was the change? They said, Kathy, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Now, where did that power come from that caused that baby, that healed that baby so that it could breathe and gain weight and go home? Where did that power come from? It didn't come from me. Where did it come from? Let's go to Romans 1.16. We've been talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Today we are going to talk about the resurrection not just the resurrection, the power of the resurrection. I'm going to begin in Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Not timid to look at it. Not timid to use it. For it is the power of God. Do you see that? The gospel is the power of God. 
unto everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Where did that power come from that caused that premature baby to be healed? It came from the gospel. I want us to turn to Ephesians 1. I'm going to begin in verse 16. This is Paul praying for the people of Ephesus. And he says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Remember how we prayed at the beginning that God would open our hearts? Well, here, open your eyes that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And look at verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? The exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe and set him at with usward who believe according to the working of of his mighty power. Look at this. According to the working of his mighty power. This is talking about Jehovah. This is talking about our father. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That power. Who raised Jesus? Jehovah, the father, raised Jesus from the dead with exceeding great power. Exceeding great power raised Jesus from the dead. You want to consider that for a second? Have you ever considered, have you ever considered what happened behind the scenes in the resurrection? We all know the story. The stone was rolled away. Angels sat on the stone. Uh, Jesus showed up to Martha, I mean, uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. We all know that part of the story, but have you ever considered about what happened behind, behind that stone, behind the scenes? Do you know it's written in the Bible? Do you know that that part of the story is written in the Bible? Turn with me to Psalm 18. We're going to begin in verse 4. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Who is this? Who is this talking about? Well, who is the only one we know that was in, was in hell, was, was dead? Jesus. This is talking about Jesus. This psalm is talking about Jesus and the Father. And I want you to look at the exceeding greatness of our Father that he performed in Jesus. It says, the sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. Jesus could not get out of hell. He couldn't get out. Now remember, Jesus is a man. Remember his spirit and soul was in hell. Remember that while his spirit and soul was in the lowest pit, That spirit and soul had your sin on it and my sin on it, our perversities on it. That soul had all our sin in it, part of it. It had all our perversity, all our poverty. Everything wrong about us was on in that soul. And then waiting in a grave was that body. Now that body had every bone out of joint on it, lying in a grave. It had every disease on it, lying in a grave. It had every handicap on it, lying in a grave. It had every mental problem with it, lying in that grave, wrapped up dead. The soul and spirit in hell. I want you to get that picture in your mind of what is happening at this moment. And this is Jesus crying out, in my distress, verse 6, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled 
and the foundations also the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. If you go to Matthew 28, it talks about a, a, um, an earthquake happening as the resurrection's happening. It said there went up smoke out of his nostrils, fire his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it. Verse 9, he bowed the heavens also and came down. This is talking about the Father. He bowed the heavens also and came down. Darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. This is our heavenly Father coming after his Son. Who's in hell? I love this. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens. And the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. This is not something that's happening quietly in a corner. This is the Father coming after his Son. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomforted them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. And look at this next verse. He sent from above. He took me. This is Jesus. He took me and he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me. Do you see the power of God here? Jesus said, he came, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy for they were too strong for me. For me, Jesus couldn't get out of hell, so the Father came and got him. That right there, friends, is the resurrection. The Father came and got him. Got him out of hell. Got that soul with all that sin on it. Got it out of hell. Put him back in that body. Healed that body of every sickness, every disease, Every perversity, every sin, every spirit, every mental problem, put him back together. That is the resurrection power of the Father. That's who got Jesus out of hell. Let's go on a little further. His enemies, they prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me. Because he delighted in me. That is the resurrection. Now, I want to show you one other thing about that resurrection. If you see here, Jesus didn't just crawl out of the grave. There was an earthquake. The father went to hell and got him out. Put him back in that body. But that power wasn't just on Jesus. I want you to go to Matthew 27. And I'm going to begin in verse 50. Verse 50 talks about Jesus back on the cross. Jesus, when he cried with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost when he died. Verse 51, and behold, the veil of the temple was went in train, twain from the top to the bottom. We've already talked about that. Now look at this next part. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. 52, and the graves were opened. Graves, graves, plural. Graves were opened. And look at these next, this next part. And many bodies, many bodies, many bodies, many bodies, many bodies of the saints which slept arose arose. Do you see the power of the resurrection? Many bodies arose with Jesus. Many. That is the power of the resurrection. And look at the next verse. And came out of the graves. 
Yeah, you don't like that devil, do you? And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And as I've said, Grandma shows up at the door. What are you going to do when Grandma showed up at the door alive? That is the power of the resurrection. That is the power that your and my father has. And what does he do with it? Go back to Ephesians. We're going to go back to Ephesians 1. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Now we saw right here where God went and got Jesus out of hell. He went and got Jesus' soul and spirit out of the lowest pit, forgave all the sin, got rid of the sin, got rid of the perversity, raised the man from the dead, the man from the dead, made him alive forevermore, took every bone in that body and put it back together perfectly. Every disease taken, healed from that body, made it perfect. Every handicap made perfect. Every mental problem made perfect and healed. That is the power of the resurrection. The exceeding greatness of his power to usward too. Do you see that? Two. Two. Do you know, I love the Bible because some of the smallest words are the most important. Exceeding greatness of his power to. To who? To who? To usward. That exceeding power to usward who believe. Amen. To usward who believe. That same power that God used to get his son out of hell, to put that body back together, made perfect, never to die again. That same exceeding greatness of his power that raised all those people from the dead on the resurrection morning. That same power is for two, two, to us. To us. For us. Available to us, available to us. Amen. What is the only prerequisite? We believe. We believe. I believed that day that that premature baby needed to breathe. What did I believe in? I believed in the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I believed what Jesus did for that child, that he, that he bore that child's inability to breathe. And you know what happened? That power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, manifested in that baby because I believed. That's all I had to do was believe. And that child was healed. The same thing will happen to you. The same thing works in you. That same power is available to you. Free. Grace. Mercy. Free to us. I want, you, I want to finish this program with a beautiful song done by the My Girls, Jesus the Messiah.
of God in your life? Is there something that you need right now from God? And you, you, you say, but I don't have the faith that you people have. Ah, I want to remind you of blind Bartimaeus. I want to remind you that that blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging, blind. He heard Jesus was coming. So he starts crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He kept crying out. They said, they told him to be quiet. He wouldn't be quiet. He wouldn't stop. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Wouldn't stop. Wouldn't stop crying out after Jesus. You know what happened after a while? Amen. Jesus said, go get him, bring him here. And then blind Bartimaeus comes and Jesus said, what would you that I do for you? And blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus, that I might receive my sight. You know what Jesus told him? You know what Jesus told him after he opened his eyes? He said, blind Bartimaeus, your faith made you whole. Your faith made you whole. What was blind Bartimaeus' faith? He didn't stop. He didn't stop. He went after Jesus until Jesus did something for him. And Jesus called that faith. Romans, uh, Romans 10, 13. Those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call. Don't stop calling till you get your answer. Till next time, God bless.